this video, I'd like to talk about the conversion factor GC. So there's a lot of confusion regarding GC and its use, and so I'd like to try and clear that up a little bit. So it helps to have a little bit of unit history. So first of all, primary dimensions are dimensions that are arbitrarily defined. So for instance, a length, a foot, or inch. And then secondary dimensions are dimensions that are defined in terms of primary dimensions. And these are things such as volume. So before unit standardization, most units were arbitrary. So most length units were primary, foot, mile, etc. Most weight un units were primary. Most force units were primary. Most area units were primary. And most volume units were primary. And also before unit standardization, most unit conversions were also arbitrary. So originally weight was defined as a primary dimension because it was easily measured. However, the weight or force of an object is dependent on acceleration, but the mass is fixed. Mass became a primary dimension referred to as pound m at this point. Now there were two independent primary dimensions, pound foot and pound mass related by one equation, force equals mass times acceleration. So this required a conversion factor. And so this conversion factor, GC, which you can see, GC multiplied by the force is equal to mass times acceleration. So GC. GC is a conversion factor that must be used every time mass and force are related in some way. It is always present in calculations involving work, power, and heat transfer. The value of GC depends on the unit system used. If the unit system defines mass, length, and time as primary dimensions, with force as a secondary dimension, then GC will have a magnitude of 1. If the unit system defines force, length, and time as primary dimensions, with mass as a secondary dimension, then GC will also have a magnitude of 1. If both the mass and the force are defined as primary units, then GC will not be a magnitude of 1. So in other words, if the mass and force are primary units, then GC is not 1. But if mass, length, and time are primary and force is secondary, then GC will be 1. And if force, length, and time are primary and mass is secondary, then GC will have a magnitude of 1. The SI system was put into place to avoid all of this confusion. And the SI system is a base 10 unit system with minimal primary dimensions. And the magnitude of GC is 1 for the SI system. The British system introduced the slug for mass. And one slug is equal to 32.174 pound mass. So GC in this system is also equal to 1. The British system also defines force as a primary dimension, pound mass, and mass as a secondary dimension with units of slugs. The English system defines both mass and force as primary dimensions with units of pound mass and pound force. So going back to this earlier slide, if both the mass and the force are defined as primary units, then GC will not have a magnitude of 1. So for the English system, GC does not have a magnitude of 1, but for the British system and the SI system, it does. So in summary, this table shows the primary dimensions for each unit system. So for the SI system, the primary unit for mass is kilogram. The force is not a primary unit. The primary mass for length is meter. The primary mass for time is second. For temperature, it's Kelvin. And so the magnitude of GC for this system is 1. For the British system, mass is not a primary system. Force is pound force. Length is foot. Time is second. Temperature is Rankin. And so the magnitude of, this, of GC for this system is also equal to 1. For the English system, pound the mass is the primary dimension for pound mass or for mass is pound mass for force it's pound force for length it's foot for time it's second for temperature it's Rankine 
And the, so the magnitude of GC for this system is 32.174. And there's a fourth system called the centimeter gram second system. And for this one, the mass is gram. The force is not a primary dimension. The length is centimeter. The time is second. And the temperature is Celsius. And the magnitude of GC for this system is equal to 1. So going down to these equations, GC is equal to 1 kilogram meter per newton second squared, and that's for the SI system, and it's equal to 1. And that's equal to 1 slug foot per pound force second squared, and that's for the British system, and this is also equal to 1 is equal to 32.2 pound mass foot over pound force second squared. And this is for the English system. And so you can see that this one does not equal 1. So if you're doing your equations or your system is in English units, you need to be careful about this GC. And so GC will alter what your your force equals mass times acceleration you need to take into account GC for technically all of these but the only one that's really going to change it is the English system.